Yeah. Brian, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, dude, thanks for having me. That's all right. Hey, you guys are uh, looking forward to hitting the stage here in Australia for NotFest? Oh, yeah. Like I was just telling her, like we haven't, it's been since uh, I think 2018 since we've been there. So it has been a minute and we love touring there. So um, yeah, super excited, man. Yeah, it'd be awesome to have you guys here. So obviously the uh, the massive festival isn't the only exciting thing you guys have got going on. Um, you've got your new album, Tell Me to Pieces, set to drop on March 10th. Um, it sounds like you guys had an absolute blast with this record. What was it like getting back into the uh, studio after six years since releasing Wolves? Oh, man, it was it was incredible. Um, there's so many. Re- I can talk for two hours about how all the different reasons it was incredible. But um, I don't know. I feel like there's this thing that happens, you know, you know, when you're 20 years old and you're touring the world and like all your wildest dreams come true, like everything makes sense and everything's fun, everything's an adventure. And then, you know, you do it year after year, you get a little older, you have kids, uh, you know, a house payment. And then all of a sudden things get kind of real, you know, it's like, I have to make money. I have to come home. My wife's going to be home with these kids. I have to come home with money. So it's like, it, it's like, it's still your passion. It's still your favorite thing you've ever done. Um, your favorite thing that you do is make music and create but it's also a job as well and um, you know like we found ourselves questioning like man do we still do people still care you know like do we still like should we still do this should I go get a fucking job somewhere and health insurance and stuff you know or like you know, you, those questions kind of float in your mind when you have other people depending on you. And then we get into the studio and we wrote all these songs and it was just like, oh yeah, this is what we should be doing. Um, that, that like feeling of like confidence in what we're doing and that like, yeah, like that reassurance that yeah, like we should be a band, people still care. Um, this, re- it really makes everything feel like kind of starting over for us and it makes it feel like, um, I almost feel like we're like a new band again, you know, um, everyone's just really energized and getting back into the studio, making these songs. It's just, it just felt so fresh and new and exciting in a way it hasn't in a while, you know? Yeah. Nice. Oh, excellent. Well, those instincts obviously paid off because the new album is absolutely amazing. Um, Thanks man. That's all right. So you guys have obviously have always stuck to your roots, but is it difficult to keep that story of the year sound while mixing it up to keep things sounding fresh as well, keep evolving? Um, yeah, I mean, like, for better or worse, uh, we don't ever really want to make like the same record twice, you know, so if you kind of look at our records, they each kind of have a almost like a sound of their own, you know, um, like after Page Avenue, we just like, all right, we did that, we don't want to make another Page Avenue. I mean, that would be like the safe thing to do. And we'd probably be a way bigger band if we just kept making that record (laughs) over and over. Um, but yeah, we that's not how we roll. And um, yeah, I mean, the benefit to this record is that Colin, uh, the producer, Colin Brinton, he grew up listening to Story of the Year. Um, when we first met with him, he was like, dude, it's the reason I started recording music is because of your first album. And uh, he's a couple years younger than us. And he just, I think he knew he had such a clear vision of how he wanted us to sound and how he, like we'd be in there working and he'd be like, hey, that fourth chord, Story of the Year wouldn't do that fourth chord you would do this chord. And I'd be like, Oh my God, you're right. I would do that chord, you know? So having, um, you know, a, a, someone that's like really, really passionate about the band and really like with a clear vision of what we should be and, you know, what he wanted us to like sound like and be like in 2023 was really, really, really helpful. So it's like this record just kind of, it was so easy to record and make. Um, and it was just, that's all the things you have to force and agonize over. They never wind up being good. The ones that kind of just flow out, like those are always the good songs and good records and stuff. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So all Colin's advice has obviously paid off because as soon as I heard uh, the title track, tear me to pieces, I'm like, wow. Okay. This is mm-hmm. where uh, arguably your biggest track of your career is until the day I die. It's an absolute sure. anthem. Um, yeah. But it feels like that is what, paved the path for Tammy to pieces like is yes it- 
No, you're right on the money because that's what Callan grew up listening to. And he was like, hey, the story of the year, uh, I'm glad you guys have done like heavier stuff and I'm glad you've made in the wake of determination and whatever, but like, let's get back to what I love about your band. And that's what we did. And that's, yeah, it's, um, I've heard people say in different interviews and like, I've even had friends of mine say at the radio programmer in St. Louis, it's like, man, this sounds like if Page Avenue was recorded in 2023. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool, you know? Yeah, that's excellent. That's exactly what I felt when I first heard the track. Um, yeah. Obviously, you guys have got a fairly extensive career over spanning over two decades. What's it, um, what's it been like seeing the evolution of the music industry over those 20 years? Oh, man. Yeah, so we kind of like, um, we, were kind, we kind of caught that very tail end of what I'll just call like the old music industry, like big, you know, big record deals, big publishing deals. People went to a, a store and bought a physical CD. Um, record labels invested on the front end. And, uh, you know, like the only reason we were able to tour internationally on our first re record is because the record label paid for it, you know? So we kind of caught the end of that like business model. And then, you know, 2000, you know, the later 2000s, 2010, 12, 30, every year that went by, it's like all that shit went away. And then it just became streaming. And we were a little, um, it was a little disorienting for us. It was a little, a little tough for us. You know, I think it was tough for everyone, but like the more and more streaming kind of picked up and gained popularity. And now is like the, like, that's what it is now, you know? Um, I don't think there's ever been a better time to be a musician or a creative person than right now. Like I could close my laptop, get off this zoom call, record a song and publish it straight to the world today, you know? And yeah, there's way more, you know, way more, um, I don't want to say competition, but there's just way more music out there, you know? So you have to like really, really do something really special to kind of cut through that noise. But I don't know. I still think this is like the best, most exciting time to ever be an artist, you know? Yeah, no, awesome. Um, speaking of, over your 20-year career, is there any one thing that you would say to new acts or new bands that are starting out to sort of give them a bit of advice? Yeah, so uh, I think the number one thing I would tell people has nothing to do with you know, uh, algorithms or metrics or promotion or marketing or writing or anything. I sincerely believe um, in the context of a band, the most important thing is chemistry and being with people that lift you up and people that make you better and people that you just kind of love, not to sound dorky, but um, you have to be with the right people. It is everything. So if there was one piece of advice, I'd be like, surround yourself with the best quality human beings you can because if things do take off you're going to be living in hotels and tour buses vans you know with a bunch of smelly dudes or chicks or whatever and like these people there's a cliche that's like when you're in a band you're married to five people you know and our <laughs> you know it, it's like so true it's so true sometimes i see my bandmates more than i see my wife and if these people aren't you know lifting you up making you better if they aren't just great people, man, it's like, it's not even worth it. You so have to be right with the right people. It's less about starting a band and more like starting a new family. Yes. I mean, obviously, you know, it helps to be, to be talented and have something unique to say with your art. But at the end of the day, man, like you're going to be with these people. I, I, I just, I've seen it time and time again. Um, it's crazy how many bands out there, even huge bands, I mean, there are famous examples of this, you know, uh, with some of the biggest bands on earth of like tensions within the bands, you know, everyone from the who to the Beatles, well, like some people just can't stand each other, you know, and maybe it makes for exciting art, but it makes for a miserable time, you know? Yeah. So you gotta be with people you love, man. Like you get, like, I'm the luckiest dude in the entire world. I'm, I'm in a band with my best friends on earth. I talked to my drummer, Josh. Hi, Josh. I talked to Josh almost every day of my life and not even about band stuff you know yeah. i talk to those dudes all they're literally my bet i'm like we were friends before we started playing music 
music was an afterthought. We were friends that used to skateboard together. And, and then we were just like, hey, we should probably like play music together too. And that's how Story of the Year happened, for real. Ah, nice. Awesome. Well, we're all looking forward to seeing you guys tear it up at Knotfest. What can we expect? Is it going to be a mix of old and new material or is there... The yeah, set, old the and new. Of, sorry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Old and new. And um, yeah, we're like the... We're probably like the light, lightest band, <laughs> like the least heavy band on that lineup. So um, we'll probably have to make a set list based on our kind of heavier songs. So, you know, so it's not too shocking for people. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. You, just, you, you can expect four dudes that are really happy to be back in Australia and really thrilled to be doing this for a living still. And um, you'll just we'll probably be the only band on stage like smiling, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Is there, speaking of the, the bill, is there anyone you're looking forward to playing with or anyone that you're keen to get out and see perform maybe? Bro, it's the obvious answer, but Slipknot. I've never seen Slipknot. And um, some of their records and their songs, I think are just like pivotal. Like that first Slipknot, Slipknot record is such an important record. And um, obviously the novelty of it. Um, I've just, I don't know. I'm like really looking forward to seeing Slipknot. <laughs> yeah. I think we all are. <laughs> yeah. That first um, record, man, that, that thing is just like start to finish, just an honest, raw, just amazing piece of, of, of art, in my opinion. 100%. And considering the band was still sort of found, finding themselves at that point, like. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's up next after this? I know you guys have got a tour with Yellow Card, um, with Mayday Parade as well uh, in July, I believe. Yeah back at home yep is there anything yeah, else we'll, cooking up at story of the year hq yeah we're doing we'll do some random flyouts like festivals and stuff um we're trying to get back to japan parts of the uk we're trying to get back to or you know europe um the tour with the yellow card and then at the end of the year we haven't announced it yet but we're going to do it we're going to do our own 20 year page avenue um anniversary tour probably at the very end of the year um so yeah, like we're gonna 2023 20, is gonna be really exciting for us, man. Excellent. You know? nah, good yeah, stuff. Yeah, 24, we're gonna have a new record, another new record. No more waiting seven years between albums or six years or however <laughs> long it's been. I wanna do a, a record every year, man. Nah, it's a good plan. Make it more of a habit than a than a mission. Yeah, I write all the time anyway. It's just <laughs> we just have we just have to do it, you know. Nice. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you so much. Fun having you on the show. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, man. I've had like uh, nine cups of coffee, so thanks for... <laughs> I probably I'm talked a lot. But, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it there? I don't even know. Uh, it's quarter past six. Wait, not in the morning? In the, yeah. in, the, in the morning? Yeah, man. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, don't be. It's been an absolute oh, pleasure. All right. Well, thanks for being up early, man. I appreciate oh, that's that. All right. that's, yeah. I mean, I get up that early, but I feel bad for you that you had to get up that early. <laughs> uh, it's not much out of my usual routine. Um, but oh, man, it's right been on. an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. We'll have a link to the pre to the pre order for the new album, Tear Me to Pieces, down in the show notes. And we cannot nice. wait to see you tear up the stage in, here in Australia for for Not Fest. Hell yeah, man! Cool. Me too. Awesome. All right. Have a good day.